we came across a couple of people that like fake fake accents for their videos. And I must I was thinking how oh, that must be so stressful and annoying and exhausting. If I would just try talking in any specific way for <laughs> any undetermined amount of time, I think I would go crazy. I would slip up and then I would be like, oh no. So no, you will get this weird mixture of accents that I call my own. And we're now going to start. We need to make the dough because it's a yeast dough. It has to rise. Prove yourself and rise. As we learned, rise, the song from League of Legends, like Riot Studios, fits perfectly for yeast dough because it has to prove and rise to double its volume. <laughs> And without further ado, let's get a bowl. Excuse those two holes, that's where the garlic was lying. <laughs> My American friends might disagree if they're fans of cups and tablespoons, etc., as measurements. But nine out of ten times, kitchen scale beats volume measurements. Because look at this flour, for example. This is kind of fluffy. But if I press down, then I could get so much more flour into this cup or into this bowl. So it's not the most accurate. I'm very good, Mazut. I'm very good. I'm very much looking forward to today's food. So uh, I'm excited if it's going to go right or wrong. That's also something, but apart from that, Friday is going well so far. I have more stuff planned for tomorrow. Well, this week was kind of weird. Like here, my mom, for example, had a car accident. Nobody got hurt. But it's just one of those things that sometimes happens. Sabichi, good morning to you too. Good morning. Is it 11 where you're from or is it earlier if you're saying good morning? I'm sometimes not sure if I even should say like good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening because wherever you are, it's going to be something else. If I have people from Australia and America here, it's literally going to be opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Stendis, hello. Speaking of Stendis, uh, you get a Greek restaurant recommendation from me later. Remind me. I need some more flour. By the way, when I'm saying flour, most of the time I'm using what's called, I would, uh, I think in English, all purpose flour. In German, it's called type 405. <laughs> Sounds like a robot. Black clothing is not optimal. Not optimal for flowery businesses. <laughs> Dovi Ponik, good morning, my dear. How are you? Flour is here. Now we, we don't need the cheese. I'm just going to put that in the fridge so it doesn't melt into a clump. Um, I need the yeast. So go into the fridge. See you in a second. <laughs> The usual spiel, do you say spiel, spiel? You don't have to use fresh yeast, you can use dry yeast. Honestly, at this point, instant dry yeast is the same in terms of effectiveness, etc., as any other fresh yeast. But fresh yeast is more fun to touch, so I'm going to use this one. <laughs> Has this funny, <laughs> giving me goosebumps on my legs. <laughs> Interesting issues to have. And we talked about this, I think, when I made the bread last week. But just recently, I had another talk with a vegan saying that they don't like eating yeast. Because to them, it's somehow more alive than a lot of other ingredients. <laughs> yes, QB is kind of weird. I don't think you can see the goosebumps. Not strong enough. 
And I'm definitely not going to show you my legs. <laughs> that would be weird. So one cube of fresh yeast. Oh, the smell. The smell. And now we need salt. Salt and then warm water. I had someone recently ask me like what I mean with warm water. And I was like, I don't know. I'm just in general using like warm water from the tap. Not hot, not cold, lukewarm, so it feels nice. It feels warm, but you can leave your finger in without getting it burned off. <laughs> and speaking of, now we need warm water. So let's see if the water cooperates today. Hello, hello, QB. You don't want to be anti -deep. Yeah, warm water. Roughly, the fun thing is with a with a pizza dough, you can measure really easily, because this is now fifty first. Because it's usually flour, and then the amount of water is half of that. So five hundred grams of flour. I'm going to use two hundred fifty grams of water. See how that melts? It's nice, isn't it? So it was 550, so 800. I've done this a couple of times in the past, so I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> she said I'm probably going to fuck it up now. Um, <laughs> however, if you are making this for the first time, or you're not like an expert on yeast dough, pizza dough, I mean, who is? It's a drama queen ingredient. Start with less water and like work your way up. You can also go the opposite direction. You can start with the with the water and work your way up with the flour. It's always something. Baking is science. Baking is chemistry. However, nothing says that you can't adjust shit. Because sometimes you have to. Westbeck, thank you for the follow. So I always like to first use a spoon to get the ingredients together. Because if I start out with my hands, which I'm going to switch to in the morning, in a the moment, then uh, I'm going to have all the gloopy stuff on my fingers. And that's not fun. <laughs> Lerners Breiden. What language is that? Is that like an ac uh, accented version or like a dialect of Czech? Also a long time no seen. How are you, Leoners? Hope you're having a nice Friday. I think I might add a bit more water to this one. But first I'm going to mix it a bit. It's really a day-to-day -day things. <laughs> Some days it's just a temperature that doesn't allow for the dough to rise properly. And you can do whatever the frick you want and it will not work. <laughs> so first going to use my hands and see if I can turn this into the dough I want. But I think I might need a bit more water because this, as you can see, has a lot of flour still around. And that's funny, isn't it? You always use the same measurements. Sometimes it just ends up different. Hello, Xarex, just dropping by. <laughs> Gigi Hotcast. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can continue that. Podcast iron, <laughs> podcast iron skillet. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> just definitely need some more water. It's a slangish version, malformation of Dobri then. Then I saw it correctly. Woohoo! 
Dobry den to you too. What are you cooking, Dobry Ponik? Hey, our new lurk command is working. <laughs> Thank you for setting it up, Zarek, uh, Ferriman. And as always, if you want to make this yourself, if it turns out good, I don't know, today is a very experimental stream, feel free to come over to our Discord. That is where the recipe will go up. You can also use the dough hook for this, but I have a preference <laughs> for using my hands. It's always more fun. It's also way more messy, but it's fun. Hey Jade, how are you? Good morning. Yeah, Zarex, the plan for tomorrow is Cult of the Lamb. The plan is Cult of the Lamb. I was considering Lost in Play, but I think that's coming next week, maybe. We'll see. You're making lentils. Oh, don't leave me hanging. I mean, leave me hanging if you need to attend your lentils. But I'm curious, what kind of lentils? What way? Yes, I'm well, Jade. Thank you. I'm very well. I'm so happy with how well also you seem to all like me doing this. I was, I must say, I was kind of afraid that like nobody's going to show up. Nobody. So it's always really cool to hear that you guys enjoy this. It really, really, really is. If you're supposed to have bread with generic Czech lentil soup. I'm not sure I can help with that, learners. <laughs> like, Czech lentil soup is not my expertise, I would say. <laughs> but I'm also going to have to admit that I'm not the biggest lentil fan in its raw state. Just from the fact that lentils, to me, are little blobs of flour in this, <laughs> like most states, I would say I don't... I wouldn't have bread with it. The most usual way to prepare lentils in Germany. Uh, lentil soup. <laughs> the most usual way to eat lentils is in a kind of soup slash stew where you have where you have the lentils cooked in a broth with slices of like hot dog, like sausage. And Cubes of potato. <laughs> That's a very, very common food. Sometimes instead of potato, you have like knöpfle, which are the smallest version of spätzle. Also, I've recently watched Guilty Pleasure, like some of those American cooking shows, which are basically warfare. But, uh, this one person always kept calling Spätzle, Spätzle, Spätzle. And it was so adorable. It was very weird, but... I like to use lentils instead of ground meat. Like, they take a lot of flavors very, very well. So in some dishes, I just like to replace them. Ha 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 ha. Adam, hello, how are you, my friend? Also, as Jade said, dal is amazing. <laughs> I must say, due to our, like, our honeymoon was in Mauritius. And Mauritius, for those that don't know, has huge influences from India and Africa, in terms of cuisine and culture. So there's a shit ton of curry and I can't see 
dal or curry for the next three months. <laughs> Something like that. Sure, Dorby Bonique, please post a picture. I would love to see that. <laughs> Everything is photogenic if you put some nice green leaves on top planners. <laughs> Yeah, like lentil bolognese is something you can do. I usually try to, if I use lentils instead of meat, I'm oftentimes making those recipes with less carbs because lentils are pretty much pure carb. All very carby, at least to me. Oh my God, this is a workout. <laughs> Lentil bolognese is really fun. You can also, um, mm, there's for example, cottage pie, which is probably my favorite dish in the world, which is vegetables, ground meat. Usually we have uh, bell peppers and peas, ground meat, vegetables, and uh, mashed potatoes on top. And then some nice cheese, cheesy, crusty layer on top. And it's one of those things where you can replace the meat with the lentils quite nicely. I hope you're seeing where I'm going with this dough. Yui, <laughs> is, there, is there an ambulance? Is there? I don't know if this is a thing dogs do, but our dog does. He howls when he hears ambulances. I don't know what is it about... You don't have to, it's all good. Oh. <laughs> he howls when he hears the sirens of ambulances. And it's quite cute. It was when the first time, he, the first time we ever heard him howl, he did it after an ambulance passed by. And uh, yeah, we were very confused what the hell is going on. And I think he is currently a bit confused. <laughs> See, you know, already you can see all the nice little air bubbles that form. Even though the dye, dye, the dough hasn't risen yet at all. I'm going to need it some more on the table. You can make this splat. Speaking of splat, Splatoon! Thoughts on Splatoon? I'm curious. Platoon 3 just was shown in a long Nintendo Direct and I'm not sure what to think of it. Some people call it Splatoon 2.5 or Splatoon 2 Deluxe. I kind of get it. Cod you love cottage pie? And, mm, yeah, shepherd, yeah, shepherd's pie is also awesome. <laughs> I mean, us Germans, we're horrible because growing up, actually, I uh, we called our cottage pie shepherd's pie because I don't even know how that started. I think it was just some misinformation and that spread. <laughs> it was only a while later, not that long ago, I must admit, that I realized that um, it's not correct name. <laughs> Oh, but yes, that sounds delicious. I have to make shepherd's pie sometime soon again. It's one of my comfort foods, number one. Well, if you're going to make it, Jade, we have this thread on our, <laughs> on our Discord where everyone is very, very, very welcome to post their cooking adventures. I was so happy with the fact that I realized, oh, today we don't need any pans or pots or cooking or anything. And now I'm here making myself a workout with the freaking dough. Oh yeah, food is definitely a happy place of mine as well. Together with games. <laughs> and here we are. But seriously, I'm not sure what to think about Splatoon. There seems to be 
not that many new things. I'm not going to say anything in the regards of, oh, this sucks, this is not worth the third, third installment. <laughs> but uh, from a completely uninformed outsider perspective, compared to Splatoon 2, I'm not just seeing that many different things. I mean, some cool new weapons. This Splatana thing looks really fun. <laughs> I'm always a fan of melee weapons. It's so pretty. <laughs> you can do it! But apart from that, maybe it's also just the fact that a lot of Nintendo games are so... <laughs> like their art style, their graphics are so timeless. Woo! What do you think about Nintendo and their constant appeal to a younger audience, but it being mature in the end, I want to try the dough. Dobry den. So you basically said nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the voice from the off. I want my shoes. How is your stream? Is there nice people or shall I bend them all? I think you're the only one that is currently not nice and yelling. Good. <laughs> good. He says good. No more stealing though. No, I'm just taking my shoes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's dandies. Mm -hmm. Not working and slacking off again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Says the one who is procrastinating. No, I'm taking the dog. Of course you are. Bye bye. The thing is with Nintendo that a lot of the, those their games, they, they just don't evolve as strong as some of other games outside the Nintendo bubble. Like, obviously, if you compare, like, Zelda Breath of the Wild to the beginnings of the series, that's visibly different. But if you then take a Splatoon, which I don't even know when the first game came out, is it 10 years by now? I think it's roughly five since the second one. And they just all look very similar. <laughs> and I think the second one even got the same criticism. That the... That the uh, that it's basically Splatoon 1.5, which is kind of funny. So these were now two half updates, so we are now officially at Splatoon 2 or something. If I'm ever making merchandise, I'm going to make an apron with "You can do it." That probably exists already. Let's be real. So. Nice dough, tada! I like yeast dough, <laughs> it makes me happy. I'm going to put that into the bowl now and let it rise. Prove yourself and rise. So this goes in here. Tada! I'm going to cover it with a kitchen towel and letting it rise. Normally you might have to put it in like a preheated oven or in, in, in a very warm spot on a heater. However, with the temperatures outside, you can screw that. Who needs that if it's outside the same temperature as in a warm oven? Speaking of warm oven, I'm going to preheat mine. That's important. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands quickly and then I'm going to be back with you because now all the huge cutting endeavor has to start. Seriously, the biggest part of making pizza is cutting all the stuff that goes on top. Or in my case, kind of-ish kind of -ish inside. I'm so curious if today's dish will work. I'm so curious. Also a bit terrified. But it should. I've done pizza a hundred times. I've done the s sweet version of this dish a hundred times. It should work. Hopefully. Hopefully it will work. Haha. -ha. So while I'm cutting my toppings and a couple other things, I want to know what is your favorite type of pizza? 
Like, if I would now offer all of you a free pizza, what would you order? It's a very important question in life. <laughs> Cutting board. Here. Knife. And all the things that have to be cut. The one without cheese. <laughs> true, Wagaga. True. Uh, we've been through that. We have been through that. So, the three main things that we first have to cut before we're going to go in terms of like toppings, traditional toppings that go on a pizza. First, we're going to basically make the sauce, which is slightly different today. Ooh, let's not lose, lose these cute little cherry tomatoes. Because my sauce is tomato paste, this stuff, and some chopped cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes, not normal tomatoes, because these guys have less glibber on the inside so a uh, huge win because we don't want too much sauciness because then we're just going to have water pizza and nobody likes that i would say <laughs> well gaga and stendis can work together one gets the cheese and one gets no cheese ham prosciutto cheese salami with corn all of them <laughs> So many different vari variations. So no sausage dovi pony, understandable. But what would you add? Like some specific veggies? I'm going to use ham and salami today. And I'm going to have corn. But I'm going to make the corn probably as a side dish. Kind of in the mood for that. There's no breakfast. <laughs> mm, how do we start? How do we start? Let's start with the meat. If I'm putting this recipe out, I'm not even going to write like, use salami, use this, use that. I'm just going to write toppings because pizza toppings are such a specific choice. Character specific choice. Hawaiian pizza with mushrooms. Ooh, I haven't heard of that one. I must admit. Do mushrooms and pineapple go together? <laughs> I mean, probably, otherwise you wouldn't eat it, right? So I'm going to do really small pieces because personally, I like that. I like to have tiny bits that are all over the pizza. Love it. Please refresh my memory. Lovets, Lovek, Lovec. Which one is it? Just so I'm not saying your name incorrectly. <laughs> Separating it a bit because otherwise the whole point of having like tiny little bits is kind of not there. So it's Lovets. Okay, I'll try to remember. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. Salami. I'm in general a big, 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 big fan of small cut food because it allows you to get a bit of everything with one fork, spoon, whatever. And I like that. There's this cooking show. I don't know if it's a German invention, but it's a cooking show called The Taste. And they have to make not dishes. They don't cook like one dish. They make spoons. They're like this big. And they have to put the whole flavor profile, everything they want to like show to the judges into this spoon. And I like it a lot. <laughs> it's this weird, this weird thing for me that I personally just don't like eating things separately. If there's a dish, which is why I like soups and stews so much, I need a bit of everything that whoever made the food thought is important for the food and I want it all all together. We're all in this together. Something like that. 
Because if somebody makes, like for example, the chicken tenders I made on Monday, is it already Monday? That is something that without the cucumber salad that I made with it, just doesn't taste as good. Not at all. Hum. What's the difference between soup and stew? Hmm. First, I'm going to say PG Belligam. Hello, how are you? This fine Friday. And then I'm going to say to stand this. I think the difference between soup and stew. Hmm. A soup to me is more liquid. While while a uh, a stew is more something something cooked together, like a thick soup. For example, if you look at at tomato soup. You can make a tomato soup. <laughs> yeah, I'm careful. I I'm, I'm yeah, careful with the knife. <laughs> My finger is still not 100% happy. Um, a soup, a tomato soup, I would really use like pureed tomatoes, cook them very thinly, and that's it, like a liquid. If I would use like, a, or if I would say like a ratatouille, that is a stew to me. There's still a lot of liquid, but it's all more cooked together. And that is probably not the official definition. <laughs> You are at a festival. This last weekend? A lot of my friends were at the Elbenwald festival. I think Wacken was also. Was it one of those? <laughs> but cool that you meet some nice Germans. That's the secret. secret. Like, a lot of Germans are actually quite nice. We're just trying to hide it. I've actually, I've been in a lot of countries and the thought that Germans are very serious, they don't have humor and they're just not very nice. They might even be considered rude. It's so prevalent. Kind of scary sometimes. <laughs> Let it roll near Prague. Interesting. So I'm going to keep one slice of ham for me because I didn't have breakfast <laughs> and working with all these ingredients is slowly making me hungry and I still need to wait a bit before my actual food is ready. God damn it! It's always the thing if I'm streaming my cooking it obviously takes much longer. If I would just make my food I would be done much 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 faster. I also wouldn't have such nice company, but all has its ups and downs. So obviously, if you're making pizza, do your own stuff. Don't use ham and salami because I'm doing that right now. There are days when I really don't like, like meat on my pizza. There's days when I don't like salami. There's days where I only want like the pizza without any toppings at all. Overcooked IRL. Oh God, yes. Actually, oh, I need to remind my, my dearest husband. Um, we played a game recently together, a cooking game. And I need to ask him the name because it was a lot of fun. It was a lot like overcooked, just a bit more with a more realistic edge where you were able to then upgrade also your restaurant and you had to ask the people what they want for food, some wanted dessert. It was really cool. But I have no idea how it's called. I'm going to figure it out though. <laughs> Overcooked was actually one of the first games that I introduced to my mom. She was uh, amused, then stressed, <laughs> and then after I took the controller away from her, she was 
a bit more appreciative about games. It's always like those little baby steps of like, this looks fun, let's play it. We play it, and she figures out that it's much more difficult than it potentially looks. And the appreciation goes a bit up. I have like, seriously, by now I have a plethora of arguments for why gaming good. <laughs> Cook, serve, delicious? Maybe. You need to look it up. You need to look it up. Wow, 45th minute run of Risk of Rain 2. For the first one. Impressive. Good. Topping's done. Now we're going to... What are we doing next? Trying to go by... This leaves the cutting board the quote-unquote cleanest. And the garlic is going to make it sticky and the tomatoes are going to make it very soupy. So what am I doing next? Mm, I think this. So this is also more on the optional side, but it adds a lot to me. I like to use dried tomatoes in the dough. It's a bit like other people might add raisins to to a enriched yeast dough, like a like a braid. God, how is it called in English? Chala bread. German simply here for top yeast braid. So I like to cut very thin slices of dried tomatoes and knead that into the dough later. Yum. <laughs> might be, might be the cook serve delicious. Great to have to look at it at a moment. I first need a bowl though. My cooking always involves a lot of bowls. A lot of them. But what I was talking about just now with my mom, I'm very fortunate that I have parents that are very open-minded in this regard. So growing up was sometimes a struggle. There was, for example, uh, always a bit of a fight around watching anime, because back when I was young, uh, that was one of those, <gasps> what is this, things. And um, we had an especially fun situation around Inuyasha because if you know Inuyasha you know that it's like it, it, there is some obviously canonical violence like that's demons fighting with swords and teeth and magic but it's still comparatively tame however the one scene my mom obviously sees for the first time she sees anything of Inuyasha is one where the protagonist wants to hack off the arm of another character which is probably one of the most brutal statements in the whole series. <laughs> Took me a while to convince her that no, this is not what this show is all about. <laughs> she really liked Run Mile and a Half though. Which, speaking of, I think I want to watch again sometime soon. Sometime soon. Another one of those animes was Dragon Ball. Which was also a bit on the controversial side with a lot of parents, I think, back then. Especially Dragon Ball Z, when it got more intense. Uh, Attack on Titan, I'm going to leave that to my little sister. She already showed her that, I think. <laughs> By now, thankfully, we don't share a living room anymore, so I don't have to justify the stuff I'm watching. <laughs> But speaking of Dragon Ball, what, I, I think I saw a Fortnite thing that there's going to be a Dragon Ball crossover with like a big glowing Shenlong uh, in the sky. I mean, I'm not really playing Fortnite, but I must say that got me curious. <laughs> just to see how they're implementing it. If it's just going to be skins or if they're really going to add like some... Uh, sort of lore. <laughs> Dry tomatoes are so good. She said and dropped it. What is not in Fortnite? Good point, good point. <laughs> no Pokemon yet. That could be kind of interesting. You're going for lunch, Barryman? Wait, check. Dobro Hut? 
Guten Appetit. Have a nice lunch break. See you soon. I mean, Fortnite, in its core, I think there's so much freedom of the, like, the developers can pretty much do anything. So why not do, like, a Pokemon crossover, for example? Or Temtem. I mean, Temtem is now finally entering or leaving early access. I'm really looking forward to that, I must say. I played it when it came out first, but then I kind of dropped off because life just happened. And maybe I'll use this, this real release, like the release out of early access, maybe I'll use that as a fresh starting point. I actually backed uh, Temtem on Kickstarter. And in case you have no idea what the hell a Temtem is, um, <laughs> it's similar to Pokemon, but it's an MMO. It's a lot of fun. Mm. Garlic or tomatoes or basil? Basil last. So I think I'm going to do garlic next. Shenlong flying bus. <laughs> Why not? Why not? A uh, bowl, bowl, bowl do we have? Always need so many bowls. <laughs> Shenlong flying bus could be interesting. <laughs> when I was younger, we had the discussion about... <laughs> so, there's this age-old discussion. If dubs or subs, if you're watching an anime in its original form, so Japanese, with some sort of subtitles, so subbed, or if you are watching the anime without subtitles and instead dubbed over, so voiced over, by some voice actors in your language. And that was a heated debate still to this day. <laughs> well, Gaga is on the sub side. To me, it's actually... Hello, QB. Hello, Radio. How are you? <laughs> yeah, it's very warm outside. Do we stop in the shadow and stay there like, no, we're not moving anywhere else. <laughs> it's way too warm outside. It's good for my yeast dough, though. So it seems my chat is very much on the, on the uh, sub side of watching animes. <laughs> I must say that I agree. To a certain point. Newer animes I also prefer watching subbed because usually they're just better. Like it's not even a competition. However, when anime was still more, I would say, prevalent in normal TV, so not on Crunchyroll or something, you want to steal something, but, <laughs> but instead on f normal TV, so you came home from school and you were able to watch Detective Conan or Naruto or Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Digimon, Monster Rancher, Kamikaze, Kaitojan, etc. German dub is really, really good. <laughs> German dub has some of the coolest voice actors. And especially, for example, Dragon Ball. Our voice actor for Goku is just one of the best <laughs> and also for example Yu-Gi-Oh obviously growing up I didn't even know there are subbed animes I watched it in German and the voices are so good I had a major crush on Yami Yugi <laughs> especially in his like uh, ancient Egyptian version as Atemu and uh, <laughs> Then I tried recently watching this anime on Netflix in English and it sucks <laughs> so much. <laughs> but also we had this big, 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 big thing when I was young because for some reason people were like, nah, English dubs are so much better. 
And with Dragon Ball, we had this fight about the name of the cloud Son Goku is riding on. Because in Japanese and in German, it's called Jindo Jun. For some reason, the Americans <laughs> made it Nimbus Cloud, which is not even a proper name. <laughs> so that was a fun discussion that dragged on for way too long. Naruto in Czech had only three voice actors. How did that happen? <laughs> How did that happen? The most I know about like Czechification of, of some uh, some work is uh, is Harry Potter and the fact that the translators changed everything, which is in a way really cool, but also it kind of like if it's such a gigantic franchise. And you then change the names of the houses, for example. You're not go no, ever going to find merchandise for that. <laughs> Japanese Pokemon in the original form. I have no idea where I would look for that. No idea. Maybe there's like a... Um, a in an anime subreddit? Or some other type of anime forum? Now I'm really in the mood to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! again. <laughs> I still have all my Yu-Gi-Oh! decks. All of them. And they're good. <laughs> mm. It's on Netflix, but not in Czech. Um, VPN? <laughs> Just the first thought. I think I'm going to swap my knife for this. Because for cutting tomatoes... A serrated knife is actually better. I mean, few voice actors is not even necessarily a problem if you look at... Hello! If you look at Simpsons, for example, they do just fine. Every major character has a voice actor, but for the side characters they had like two guys and two ladies for the whole thing. Hinata has the same voice actress as every other lady character until she became important. Ow! And then they changed it. Okay, that is also a bit, I guess, problematic. I mean, I understand the, the argument that some of the, of the jokes or puns or something, they go away if you are not in, like, if you're not reading a book in your native tongue, like, for example, Harry Potter. However, like, there's not that many, not that many names that I could think of. Like, if you think, for example, Lucius Malfoy, that guy, the name is a French thing, Malfoy. Um, so it's not even English. <laughs> Where's the tomato knife? Where's the tomato knife? Tomato knife with serrated edges, small and very useful. Works much better. Um, yeah. And you don't need to, like, Hufflepuff or Slytherin, they don't necessarily mean something. I mean, Slither, you can say, maybe. But Gryffindor, Gryffin and Dor doesn't even have anything to do with the lion or with bravery or something. And Ravenclaw, the same thing. So I think as long as it's really just names, I don't think it's necessarily necessary to swap names. There's actually the opposite with um, Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire in German. Song of Ice and Fire uh, was translated into German, obviously. This book series is quite old by now. The guy doesn't write <laughs> as fast as he should. And um, the first books, the names weren't translated. So it was Jon Snow, and it was King's Mouth, and stuff like that. And only later they translated those things, because from a lore perspective it made more sense. Because Snow, for example, Jon, it's not even a name, 
it's more a, like term for this category of people, for bastard sons born in the north. Like the others had flour and sand, etc. So in this regard, I understand it. If stuff gets translated that has that has a reason for being translated. And I understand that a book might sound much better if all the words are in the same language. I had this discussion with my dearest husband already in the past. I think there's benefits and downsides to it, as with most things in life. Czech Simpsons have the best voice actors. I can't say anything about that. I can say the German ones are also pretty good. Although there are new ones rather recently for Homer, for example, because I'm not sure if the old one, old one um, retired or if he actually died. I'm not going to say anything, <laughs> but he was amazing. The new one, I think we're just used to the old one so much. Yeah, exactly. Like I understand that, Wagaga. Like the Luna, Looney, etc. There are reasons for it. As I said, I think there's reasons for and against it. There's no right or wrong. I just find it a very bold decision, especially for something like Harry Potter. With such a gigantic fandom all over the world. Could have also resulted in the opposite, in like people hating it. But then with like, with the, uh, so she was called Strelenka Lovegood? Or how was she called in Czech? Because then her, her nickname doesn't work anymore, does it? With Looney. Oh yeah, that is also great. If a book gets translated first by someone and then by someone else, and they change it up halfway through, also wonderful. Wonderful. Stand is now just reads books in English. I mean, most books are written in English, so I understand why. Personally, I really love reading fantasy in German, because German language lends itself beautiful to fairy tales and fantasy. But I prefer sci-fi or really like sci-fi, I prefer English <laughs> and um, pretty much anything else, if possible, in, in the language of the author. So if it's an English person in English, if it's a German person in German. But fantasy and sci-fi are those two things where I'm like, this is English, this is German, and it sounds better. <laughs> Ramatvor, hello, how are you? Lots of tomato cutting. As I said, today's mo the biggest amount of work today is cutting. <laughs> the actual making the pizza is comparatively little work. <laughs> ah, okay. So yeah, as I mean, as I said, like it's beautiful if a pun suddenly makes sense if you can translate it that way. No questions asked, none. Anonymous gifted a sub to Mazut K. Well, anonymous, whoever you are, thank you very much for the gift. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Mazut K, welcome to the hot pot. I hope you enjoy it here with us. <laughs> oh, Ramat is sick. That's not good. But hey, you're home, so you can watch. <laughs> Cutting cocktail tomatoes into small pieces is always such a mess. <laughs> that is so cool with the with the ooh, okay, Uvnyukana Ursula. So that's Moaning Myrtle. The beautiful thing is in German, uh, it works even without changing anything. It's Maulende Myrte. So you get a lot of those alterations without changing the names. 
Dun, 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 dun. I mean, it's not that because there is a Czech translation, people are no longer allowed to read the English one, right? <laughs> also, I don't remember the word, but your word for Hufflepuff is definitely much cooler than Hufflepuff. <laughs> much, much cooler. I think there is always then that the question if something is just a name or if there's a meaning to it. With Moaning Myrtle, I understand, but for example, Hogwarts or something or Hufflepuff, they're just names that fit in an English landscape. Ha ha ha, I love tomatoes. Look at this. Just now some salt, pepper, maybe some vinegar, maybe a, a bit of... You gifted yourself a sub? How is that possible? Well, then, thank you for subbing, Masutu. And welcome to the hot pot. Radek is joking a lot in Czech. Am I doing the same in German? Um, I think the thing is that he's using those things so frequently <laughs> that I know them by now. The other way around, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Dum, dum. The thing is, with us living in Germany, he knows much more normal German versus me trying to learn normal Czech, but mostly hearing his nonsense. <laughs> dun, dun. Romeo G. Detlef Jr. in Danish. <laughs> I mean, I understand completely. Like That is also one of my favorite things, that they had to change Voldemort's human name to make it fit the reorganization of the letters. I think my favorite, for the pure simplicity, of course, Romeo G. Detlef Jr. is amazing. <laughs> I've never heard that, and uh, that might be now up there with my favorites. But I love the fact that in, uh, in French, his middle name is Elvis. He's called Elvis Riddle. And that's special. <laughs> I think special fits. Good. Um, this is done. I think we can now do uh, the basil. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try doing the, ba uh, the, the basil on the dry side because otherwise it will just stick. Exactly, Tom, Tom Elvis Jidusor, Je suis Voldemort. And especially in French, it kind of works again because Voldemort is inspired by French. So, we've come full circle. We've come full circle. I've also recently realized how many different ways there are how people use up their fresh basil. Some people do it like me. They always take the biggest leaves and let the rest grow. But there's people also that take stalks. Obviously, if you're making pesto, you're probably going to kill the whole thing in one go. Want in French is baguette? Now you're just, you know, that you're making that up, Dovi Ponyk. Right? <laughs> Seriously? Is that what it's called? Mm, maybe a bit more. There's no such thing as too much basil, for me at least. This won't really baguette. It feels a bit random. <laughs> but I mean, I'm not going to distrust anything. So, little trick how to cut a lot of basil, if you don't like to use scissors like I do. Stack the papers on top of the papers. <laughs> Stack the leaves on top of each other. And then you roll it 
like this till you have like this nice little thing and then you cut it in the middle ones turn it to the side and then you just cut it and you have perfect nice nice little pieces you can also go over it once more after you've done you can like but it's not necessary for me i like it when the basil pieces are a bit bigger so we'll see if this is enough but i think it should be I'm going to put that with the tomatoes Mark Nielsen in Slovenia, what? <laughs> oh my god. And fighting with baguettes in their hands sounds very fun. Tom Roivol Radl. Radl! Radeln? Radeln is a, is a colloquial way of saying driving a bicycle in German. Just for further fun facts. Good. Let's clean this off first. May I introduce you to our main protagonist? Not uh, Mr. Lakenstein, but da 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 da. Isn't the dough pretty? Aren't you so pretty? <laughs> yes, I'm talking with my yeast dough. Slovenian is Mark Nielsen. Ay, 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 ay. I mean, why not? Correct? I would love if I would have even more workspace, but no. Not today. I think instead of using mm, using flour today, I'm going to use my silk pad mat mat pad. There's a little cook. <laughs> yeah, the dough went nicely, went up nicely. It likes me. So it listens to when, me when I say, do this. So it does, it does this. <laughs> this dough, I'm now going to add this to. <laughs> and then we're going to go, um, yeah, next step, right? With pizza dough, you actually want to get rid of some of the air because otherwise you just have one gigantic bubble. But I still like to use something to get it out nicer and easier because now I can do... Whoop. There it is. Nice and clean out of the bowl. You know what's absolutely not nice and clean? What I just recently really like paid attention to? There is a shit ton of stuff going on with Nintendo, but well, not Nintendo, with Sony and Xbox. Microsoft, in regards to like console war. Because Microsoft is buying the, buying Activision Blizzard or wants to buy it. And Sony is like, no, you can't do that because Call of Duty is completely unrivaled. And that would create an imbalance. And then Microsoft is saying, no, we don't want to make Call of Duty an exclusive. And then there's talk about how Sony paid off people so, so no one um, can use their games in Game Pass, like developers, so they can't use their games in Game Pass. And like, oh my god. Drama, drama, baby. <laughs> You don't have to be so gentle. It's just a fun thing.
you can do this part with a rolling pin totally but I like to do it with my hands it's more fun because everything is more fun with my hands maybe I should have left my ring off but no Trying to keep it rather even where I put the tomato bits and bobs and pieces. You can also put it in the oven like this, add some olive oil on top, maybe some pokes with a with a fork, and you have a nice focaccia. to press those little bastards in. <laughs> it's a great thing when working with, working with silicone. You will never have issues with stuff sticking. Well, at least as if your dough is the way it should be. Um, so I want a big rectangle. That's currently the, the plan. I'm so curious if this is going to work. <laughs> if you weren't here earlier, this is the first time I'm making the recipe in this way, because usually I am making this kind of twist ring that I'm going to turn the pizza into. I am making, I'm usually making sweet. So this would be normally an enriched yeast dough without any, 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 any savoriness. No dried tomatoes and especially no dried tomatoes and similar stuff going in. But we're experimenting today and turning my cinnamon berry or apple. Usually I'm making apple. Cinnamon apple twist um, I'm turning into a pizza. Or actually I'll make small ones, I think. Because I always like less stuff inside than other people in this family. <laughs> That's this thing, like individual pizza, pizzas are always winning. It's always nice to share with others. But pizza is such a subjective thing with what you want on it, etc, etc, etc. How much cheese. That it's always easier to make one for everyone separately. <laughs> So, slowly getting there. I think the middle is still a bit too thick. Looking nice, isn't it? Looks a bit weird, I guess, <laughs> with all the little dry tomato pieces. Trying to get it as even as possible without doing any cutting. Just trying to get a nice rectangle. <laughs> it's not so easy. By the way, on Monday, my next video will go up. If so, God. So the tech gods will help me. And it is my recipe inspired by Stray. Like last Saturday, we played Stray on stream. And I made a nice, nice recipe inspired by it you want to know what i made or you want to be surprised so <laughs> it looks like stracciatella ice cream a bit a bit a bit i i understand the comparison yeah, for stray, I made something Chinese. That is true. That much is true. But I didn't make anything savory. Which, I'm curious how many people know a Chinese, or Hong Kong specifically, 
um, sweet thing. Good. I am pretty happy with that. Don't want to make it too thin because otherwise working with it will be a nightmare. It looks good. I'm not going to cut this. Am I doing two or three? Let's make two. Uh, I'm not going to cut this in the middle. But am I cutting it first or am I filling it first? I think I'll finish it. Fill it first. I'll fill it first and then I'll do the halving it and rolling it and braiding it. Because that's the fun part. nicely hmm Davidas hello how are you going to lift this a bit because once it's filled it's going to be more difficult to lift also I'm thinking if I'm going to flip it I think I will I think I want this outside dry tomato bits. Let's see if this works with it. No! Oh, I hope I didn't fuck that up now. <laughs> have been too thin in some points. Fuck. Yep, might have been too thin at some points. God damn it! <laughs> so this is not what you want, obviously, so I'm going to fix it as if nothing ever happened. with experimentation <laughs> sometimes it works beautifully and sometimes not the only important thing is that you know how to help yourself if something goes wrong good saved it totally nothing visible anymore <laughs> Again with the workout. <laughs> Good. There's another little hole that needs to be closed. And now, tomato time. Going to start with this. I'm going to see if it's enough. Going to put that everywhere, all over it. And by that, I mean tomato paste. And now we're turning this nice blank canvas into <laughs> kind of a murder scene. Because that's what you want, right? Seriously, it looks very gruesome in the, in the camera. I'm promising it's just tomato paste, nothing else. No, uh, no people were harmed for their blood in the making of this recipe. <laughs> yeah, I definitely need more. Definitely need some more. I'm using this tomato paste instead of, uh, for example, blended tomatoes simply because this is more dense and once you see the next step in this delightful adventure you will understand why too much liquid might be a problem in this recipe so we are going kind of a middle middle path 
we're doing this. We're using tomato paste. And then I'm going to add some fresh tomatoes. So it's not too intense. Thankfully, I have more tomato paste. Looks even more fun if you do it like this. <laughs> so this goes here. This already looks like I prepared for the for my next for my next video, because obviously tomorrow I'm most likely again at eleven streaming Cult of the Lamp. So. There will be a recipe inspired by that. So going by that title, I think I'm probably going to use lamb in the recipe. You'll see. It's currently the plan. This looks like there was some slaughter already taking place. Most definitely. Fits tomorrow's game. I hope it's not going to be <laughs> I hope it's not going to go too gruesome. I played the demo of Cult of the Lamb. I purposefully stayed away from most stuff being talked about it. So I'm up for a surprise tomorrow. And I heard there is some fun Twitch integration. So all the more reason, right? To come by again. And obviously next week there's going to be more cooking. Speaking of videos though and my recipes, what do you guys think about the one that I posted on Monday? About the lost ember mushroom balls. I tried something different in that video and I'm not 100% happy with it, but you live and learn and try different things. But I would love to get your feedback. Ha 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 ha! This looks like some abstract painting. Where is the lamp sauce? Is that some meme I don't know? Is that some meme I have never heard of? Okay, I think that should be enough here. As I said, I don't want to overdo it with the tomato paste because it is very, very reduced tomato. It is very intense in flavor. There was once someone in school that brought something. I think it was for some, some, some celebration. And um, he used tomato paste instead of ketchup was an interesting flavor. It was something different for a change. Not identical though. He learned that lesson. Good. Let's get rid of this stuff on the back of the spoon. Because we don't want to waste anything. No. Mm -hmm. Delicious. And now before, uh, before doing anything else, I need to decide if I'm doing two or three. Three would be like this. Let's do three. Mm, here. So I'm going to use the back of my knife because I don't need to cut this. Like there's nothing, there's no need to use a blade. I just need to go through the, through the dough. And it's more than enough if you use like the back of it, especially if you're working on silk cups, uh, like a silk pad. But really, all the time, you don't need to use like a bladed side of a knife and potentially damage your countertops or whatever you're working on. If you're working on a big, big cutting board, then uh, obviously cut to your, to your knife's content. <laughs> hey, Ferrari man, what did you miss? You missed me fighting with the dough and probably some cutting. And now we are preparing the pizza rings. I'm currently adding garlic, fresh garlic, 
always great choice for pizza. But if you're making a normal pizza where stuff goes on top, maybe mix the garlic into the sauce so it's not so exposed. Because if you're just sprinkling it on top like this, if I would now put this in as a pizza, you would get problems. <laughs> because the garlic might turn dark, black, burnt and bitter. Which is not what we want, right? At least it's not what I would want. How was your lunch, Ferrari man? Did you have something nice? So. Now the tomato goes on top. These three pieces will get filled now and then rolled up. That's the important part. So I'm going to try make it so the rolling is doable and try to concentrate uh, to not to deconcentrate the filling a bit going a bit further on the left where I'll start rolling so far this looks like a very successful experiment we'll see how it ends up <laughs> uh, we'll see the final result well you will see it if you stick around dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I'm trying to not take too much of the juice because there is already quite a bit in the tomatoes and I don't want this to get soupy in any way shape or form because soupy pizza doesn't sound that good right chicken gizek with mashed potatoes what is gizek is that schnitzel like a like a breaded Schnitzel? Well, black garlic then is something else. Black garlic is black on purpose. It's a bit different from black garlic by accident. <laughs> but yeah, I know that. I know that. Oh, what needs some more? Yeah, I think that's good. Looks good, doesn't it? No. Give me confirmation that I'm doing good. Oh, it's always scary trying something new like this. But if you don't try something new, you will never find a new recipe. Maybe you will never find your favorite recipe, right? So. Ham. I think I'm going to make mine with only ham. Maybe. We'll see. I can't even see that, what I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> Thank you, Stendis. <gasps> I mean a lot. No, ah, come here. So, as I said, trying to keep stuff a bit more on the left side. Because that's where I'm going to roll it. But not only. Because if I only do the left side, then part of this will taste like not much. Personally, I wouldn't even add salt that, like maybe a bit, I'm going to add a sprinkle of salt. But there's, if you're using meat, sausage, whatever, um, then there's really not much use to use salt. Because there's already so much in the meat. If you're using just zucchini, then please use a lot of salt. <laughs> Fun problems to have. So, nice and divide, distributed, evenly distributed. I'm going to add a bit of salt. The good thing is with salt, you can always add more later, right? So, salt. And there is one thing that I personally prefer dried, which is oregano. That goes on there too. And I think I'm also going to add some chili flakes. If you've seen my recipes, you know that this is actually one of my favorite ingredients. <laughs> I like a bit of spice. Not too much, not so much that I would add like a whole chili, but a bit, but a bit, but a boom. 
black pepper, also one of those things that goes on pretty much everything. And if you prefer white pepper, then you are simply wrong. No, white pepper also has its, its, uh, its existential reasonings. I just don't like the flavor as much. Recruit Morgan, hello, how are you doing? And now, oregano. This was a bit much, but this is one of the ultimate Italian flavors, in my opinion. And I don't know why, but I, I think, hmm, I just like this version. Andrew Revel, thank you for the follow. Thank you very much. And now comes the cheese. Ta-da! I feel I'm a bit afraid that I'm overfilling this at the moment, so I need to be careful. Wagaga can obviously leave the cheese out. Stendis and his preference for Quadro Formaggi can add all of the cheese. <laughs> but I'm going to use some on the outside later, so I'm not going to use up all the cheese I have. I also know that some people like to drown their pizza in cheese. I am not one of them. So this is simply hard shredded mozzarella. On a normal pizza, I prefer the soft version, like the, the balls. However, again, as with the tomato and all the other things, this version is, I think, in, you can compare it more to a calzone. So like a pizza that gets flipped over and you have like a pizza pocket, a big one. Um, this one is more like that. So there is very big danger of stuff getting soupy. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. The rest goes on top later. Yeah, QB. Now we're slowly getting to stuff that you like. Hmm? And now the interesting part. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm going to try first with this one because this is the one you can't see. So I'm now going to try and roll this as tightly as possible. It seems to work pretty nicely. Ah oh, no, there's a hole. Killing the hole. Good. So, first roll. I'm going to put a bit to the side while I'm doing the other two. <laughs> Looks like a like a stracciatella snake. So, taking the side, flipping it a bit over, pressing it in so it stays there. That's helpful. And then just carefully continuing to roll. I mean, you could just then leave it at that point, I think. <laughs> so let's keep all the ingredients in there. And ta-da! Pizza snake. Trying to move that to the middle. Cool. That worked less. That was less problematic than I feared. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to put the cut part, like the, the end part, I'm going to put at the bottom so it's not, yeah, it's not opening up in any direction. And now we're doing the last one, but first I need to drink something. This is more work. <laughs> Not true. You'll see in a moment. There's something. There's the most um, the most characteristic step. Ramadvo is still missing, but you'll see in a second. So this also. Well, ten belly. It seems like a pancake. Oh, well, it's a big, big pizza pancake, kind of. So last one. Again, putting the cut side at the bottom and trying not to lose anything in the process. <laughs> Yum. And now, yeah, I could do pizza snack. I could just cut circles and place it on a on a on a um, sheet pan and be done and have little schnecken schnecken noodle. 
but that's not what we're doing. I'm putting two of these aside. Further, so we have space. This goes also a bit further to the left. Beautiful. Now this is in the middle and we have space with it. It's not in the middle of the camera, but you will see. So I'm going to close the end, or the end rather, and then I'm going to take a knife. And now what we're doing is roughly like, like three, five centimeters in, you take a knife and cut this pizza snake in half. Again, if you're getting to the bottom, try to use the non-sharp side of a knife, otherwise you will have sliced pieces you don't want sliced. And now, now is the question if this will work. Now you're putting this a bit aside. It's a bit of a mess. <laughs> it's all part of the plan. All part of the plan, definitely. Not, not happy accidents. All part of the plan. So you're basically opening this up. Looks funny, right? <laughs> and then you're taking one side of this. Ah, and placing it over the other one. Yeah, I overfilled this a bit, definitely. And then you continue and place this side over this side. And always the same. <laughs> so. And this now looks like a pure mess. I hope the other ones stick together a bit nicer. <laughs> but if you can see here, these are always the twists and these are going to puff up later in the oven quite beautifully. I'm going to open this up now that I don't need to have it closed anymore. Pizza boros, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, pretzel. Uh, yeah, this is my, as I said, twisted pizza ring. And this thing will now go on a sheet pan with baking paper if I manage to transfer it, which is always part of the fun. <laughs> ah, but hey, so far, so far, the, the, the dream is still intact. It's still kind of working the way, <laughs> kind of working the way it's intended. So. baking paper mm, how am I doing this best if you use less ingredients then you'll have less less uh, issues like I do at the moment okay come here um, I don't have space I think I need an extra pair of hands. I'll be back in a second. Help. I'm watching the circles. I need help. Hands. I am watching the circles. This looks so good. I mean good, not good. Good. Holding. I'm holding. And I'll try to lift this and you put okay, it underneath. Okay, okay. Oh my god, this looks dope. Yo, <laughs> can we eat this daily? <laughs> Look at this shit. <laughs> That's what you have uh, people in the household for. This is dotting good. husbands. Dotting? What does it mean? Dotting. dotting? What does it mean? Dotting? Yeah. Help. Hello. Look at this. Helpful people. <laughs> You're a scavenger. That's what you are. Goodbye. I might need your help a bit more. It's okay. I'm going to call you again when I knew the second one. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so number one is on the. Yeah, I could do it on the baking paper. The problem is, then this. If you do it on the baking paper, it will not lie on the baking paper the way you want it to. I guarantee. I've tried this in the past. <laughs> so, um, the question is now, am I adding a second one to this one? Yeah, I think so. Two, two will fit. So I'm going to put this to the side. This one, going to go to the side, can rise a bit. And I'm going to repeat this process with the next one. Going to try to put it further in the middle so I can go in either direction with the... Um, actually, let's start here. So again, snack, schlange, snake, I'm going to cut. These are now the side pieces, so hopefully there is QB is sniffing, thinks there's something for him, but there's not. And these are hopefully a bit tighter. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so it's a cute. In the, on the baking tray, the problem is if I try to do it there, then there is no not enough space. These ones I think will work a bit better. It's a downside of using dry ingredients when I make the sweet version of this it usually involves a lot of butter and cinnamon and sugar see this one worked better interesting This one worked much better. In case uh, you can't see it properly, I'm going to show you. In a moment, I think. I think this one I could... Mm, I'll try. Always trying first. QB, you'll get a piece of ham. Boop. I need more space, but the problem is, no matter how much space you have, you will always need more. So, I might be able to do this. Nee. What? Well, because I'm part of it. You could actually help differently. Come here. Yeah, here. Yeah. Kolechko. Kolechko. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Is this more? Yeah. How many of those freaking women do you have? Three of them. Yum. <laughs> so they, they're looking quite uh, quite differently if you look at them. Um, it's kind of obvious which one came first. <laughs> this is like the, the evil evil stepchild. Me? No, this this one. Okay. This one is cool. I can hit that one. Ta-da. So this is how it's supposed to look. This one is how the first one looks. But honestly, uh, this might actually turn out the best because it's so vi as everything is so out and about. We'll see, we'll see. I think I'm going to only put these two on one and then do this last one separately. Or am I putting all of them in one? I think I could. Nah, nah, I'll do the last one separately. I think that's more intelligent. Good. Perfect. More cheese for both of these. More cheese. Ten Benny is hungry. Well, then you're simultaneously at the best part of the internet and the worst part. Because if you're having food, then you can now use my streams to get nice and even hungrier. And if you don't have food, then you're currently probably suffering a bit. Good. A bit more cheese. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and this now goes into the oven. Sprite the Gamer, hello. 
This now goes into the oven, uh, bottom third of the oven to be exact, because I want more heat from the bottom. And I'm really currently considering if I leave only two here. Okay, let's be horrible and make all three. Regrets will be had. Well, that's the topic of today. <laughs> Glad to hear it looks good. Glad to hear that. Very, very much so, Sprite. Let's put one here. This one is so much easier to move around. It's so much easier. Right. Beautiful. And now for my last trick. Let's see if the last one will turn out like this one or like this one. The beauty of this type of cake, like the normal way is to turn this into a cake, is that you have you have everything all around, a little bit of everything all of the time. You don't have a spot where there's only that or that. It's like this beautiful amalgamation all the way around. Pelixon, hello! <laughs> Why three? Um, because it ended up being three looked nice. Could have only made two, but either it's one for me, one for radio, and one to be shared, or there are always people that want to try my cooking, or he wants two. I don't know if you just heard that. <laughs> so let's try that. Let's take the snake. And let's go. Ah! <laughs> this happens off camera, it seems. <laughs> this wanted to happen off camera. But it looks good. I'm going to show you in a second once it's on the on the thing. Sometimes when you're making a cake like this, especially when I'm making my apple cake, I'm oftentimes opening up more cuts, so it's getting even crunchier and nicer. Good. So, last one goes on the... <sighs> yeah, QB would like if the last one is for him. But I don't think that's going to happen. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Let's see if this works. Aha! It worked. Ta-da, that's the third one. Looks like a mixture, honestly, between the other two, right? <laughs> Looks a bit like the mixture between the other two. Save that one for me, I'm booking tickets for the train. Well, Pelixen, you got. we would have to be very, very fast. <laughs> I think all of this will be gone in the next, like, two hours or so. Maximum. So, more cheese. On top of this one. And then they go into the oven. And we will see what comes out of the oven. <laughs> the beauty is of this, instead of for example, like calzone, is that there is everything. Like you have the, the doughy bits that hopefully get nice and crunchy as well. You have a uh, softer dough, you have all the filling everywhere. I'm honestly pretty happy with how this turning out. Might make this savory more often. Although the apple version is still a favorite in this household. Good. May I present to you the three pizza ring twists. The first one definitely looks a bit different than the other ones. Good. I'll put this in the oven now. Don't forget the rule. There's never too much uh, cheese. And so the rings of power were created, um, but none of them for the elves. Or the dwarves, these are all for the humans. <laughs> and none for the dogs, sadly, either. So, oven, bottom third. I'm curious how much they will puff. The three moons of Tatooine. Do we have any other comparisons? <laughs> so. warmth <laughs> but it the big part is done isn't that nice I'm going to steal the cheese out of the bowl the big thing is done Hossa makes me very happy 
No more plating with the oven. This is going to be 15 to 20 minutes in the oven. Wow, we're actually much later than I expected. Today is going to be a bit longer stream, I guess, huh? Slightly. Um, I, I hope none of you have an issue with that. I'm getting a bit more, more time with me. <laughs> so this goes to the side. I didn't turn off the music. Three were made for the Stellar Glaude on the throne behind the PC. <laughs> Nah, he gets two, maximum. But they did turn out really beautifully. My oven has an option uh, for bread, pizza, or whatever this is making, which I like a lot, that is um, surround air, so convection oven. But it also focuses the heat on the bottom. So it's basically bottom heat and convection, which is perfect for shit like this. Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I hope it will be good. I hope so. If it's not good, I'll just, you just don't get the recipe. Easy as that. <laughs> if it sucks, then I will forever hide in shame. And uh, nobody will ever know that it wasn't good. Oh, by the way. I'm going to make now the corn salad which I always love to do. Corn on pizza is one of my favorite things. However, the only thing that beats that is putting the corn not on the pizza, but making a very easy, I'm going to show you, it's literally like two minutes, corn salad that has a lot of vinegar. And the vinegar adds this beautiful acidity to break up all the other flavors, to break up the cheese, the dough, all of it. So. Yeah, it's just perfection. <laughs> Even if you're having just uh, like a freezer, freezer pizza, making some corn salad with it is such a step up because it lifts every single flavor. It makes them so much more pronounced and stronger. And I love it. Also, I'm going to show you what you can look forward to if you are on my YouTube channel or subscribe to my YouTube channel is free um, because there's a new recipe coming inspired by Stray can show you here. Ta-da! Ta-da! These are Hong Kong egg tarts. And they're very good. <laughs> I'm not going to eat them right now. I still have a couple left from when I made them. Because they're sweet. It's a dessert. But it is what's waiting for me once I'm done with my pizza, I guess. I'll have one or two of these. Yum yum. <laughs> I thought I'd show you. Video is coming up probably on Monday. And then you can all see how to make these. If you want to, obviously. <laughs> but if you're not interested in recipes, why are you even here? But the one was taken from it was the treacherous one. <laughs> Our Lupa, queen of the kitchen, Raoul made him to bind the others to darkness. The fate of Lord Sterag was fulfilled. <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> Why not? Why not? The Lord of the Pizza Ring lore thickens. Oh god, in these temperatures I drink like four bottles a day, something like that. Enough blah blah, corn salad time. I'm going to get a bowl first. Oh god, I wish you could smell how my kitchen is starting to smell right now. I'm going to take a bowl. I already drained the liquid, like this is simple canned corn. I drained the liquid and this is now going in there. All of it's going out. I purposefully got the black bowls because all the light ingredients, like yellow or white, look so much better on black than they could ever on white. 
So beautiful. Oh, this looks so good. And it smells so good. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, first, the first ring, the weakest one, is falling apart a bit. That's the one my husband will get. But don't tell him. <laughs> good. Corn, oil, vinegar, salt, pepper, maybe a bit of garlic powder. This is actually one of those situations where I prefer garlic powder because garlic would be very not nice to bite on. So I'm going to go with garlic powder. Also a bit easier to say how much. Corn is your favorite vegetable on anything, Palix. Ah, oh, well then, got a home run here, huh? God, I'm so looking forward when this pepper is empty so I can finally have like normal one that is not pre-ground. Pre It seems like a lot of people here like corn. Or was I miss, miss seeing that earlier? I saw a couple of people saying they would like corn on their pizza. So salt, pepper, garlic, some oil. Oh, it looks so good. I'm getting distracted a bit, but it really looks good. <laughs> I want that now. So I asked that question earlier, but we have a couple new people here. What would be the pizza? If I would say I'll, I'll give out pizza for everyone, what would be the pizza you would order right now? What would you be in the mood for? No judgment here either. So if you if your uh, favorite pizza is with strawberries and whatever, this is a safe place. You're also allowed to like strawberry pizza. We were actually in Prague at a restaurant. I forgot its name. And that restaurant, I will forever remember and I'm looking forward to that so, 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 so much. Um, they had like a rodizio. I don't know if you know what that is. It's a Brazilian type of barbecue. Like usually you have a buffet of salads and side dishes and then people go around with meat on a stick and cut it freshly of it for you, depending on if you want it, how much you want it. And it's quite fun. Josh Sport United, I guess. Pepperoni is the only acceptable choice. Is it though? It's good, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I love spicy, spicy salami, spicy pepperoni is delicious. Oh, so much. I might actually, no, not, not at the moment talking about pizza I want to eat at other places. Um, yeah, and this Orizio style, so basically you're saying, yes, I want that. The, this restaurant in Prague adapted with pizza and pasta. So instead of people going around with meat, they're going around with pizza and pasta dishes. And then you can just like say, yes, I want a bit of that. So they have, for example, some type of risotto or some uh, pasta with pesto or pizza with gorgonzola, pizza with pepperoni, like Josh said he would, <laughs> he prefers. And you only get one slice and you get one spoon of pasta, but you get all of it. So you're not limited to like one type, but you get everything. And it's like my dream come true. You can have everything. And um, that can go on. I think the full rotation is like two hours or so. There's always a bit of moment in between, like usually five, five to 10 minutes, yeah, more five in between the dishes. And you can just eat. You have a little card that is green and red, depending on the side. And you can put it down and say, I want or I don't want. And if you have the red side up, they just leave you alone. And if you have the green side up again, then they will give you more food. <laughs> it's very, very nice. And when you're done eating, when you tried everything or when, when you don't want anymore, then they, obviously you have to pay, sadly, <laughs> but um, you also get dessert pizza. And they have this amazing, Oh, these amazing fluffy pizzas, like 
fluffy pizza or crunchy pizza. There's like, I think, the fights to end all fights. Both have merits. And they have this fluffy pizza and the last two slices are dessert pizza. And one of them is with something similar to Nutella, so like a chocolate spread. And the other one is, I think the most cl uh, closest thing is like condensed milk, evaporated milk. And each of them have some strawberries on top. And it's so decadent and so rich and so sweet, but oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> and the next time I'm in Prague, I'm going to go there again because there is nothing similar anywhere I know. Have you ever heard of something like this? You don't like pizzas. <laughs> ah, so you only like the pizza your wife is making, Romotvo. What, what, what kind of dough is she making that it's so special? I'm curious. Mm, just need some more salt. Did I already add oil? I forgot. Your typical order of pizzeria is half with cream, ham, smoked cheese and mozzarella and the other half tomato sauce, pepperoni, mozzarella and corn. I mean, if you have a pizzeria that allows you to order half and half, that is already quite cool. Sweet pizza, isn't it? Pancake. No. Sweet pizza still has the fluffy, crunchy dough and has the, like, how do you say that? The edges? The crust, the pie crust. Wait, I'm going to, where's my phone? I'm going to see if I find a pizza. More similar to langosh though, but langosh is fried. Uh, Kalkin pizza, I think pizza nuovo sounds correct. Wait, I'm going to check. Pizza nuovo Prague. Is it that one? Um, I think you might be correct. I think you might have solved the question what I'm talking about, or maybe not. Wait. I think the easiest way to find is like pizza all you can eat. <laughs> it's not quite correct. It's not like an all you can eat buffet. But it comes close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is pizza nuovo. 100 points to Kalkin. What is your Hogwarts house? <laughs> so I can say it correctly. Correct, correct, correct. And ah, see, there is actually like, you can order also order the, the sweet pizza separately, it seems. And it looks like this. So you still have the pizza with like the crunchy bits and everything, but the middle is filled with yummy stuff. Sweet, yummy stuff. <laughs> I think Kalkin, the, 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 for me, those event thingies, I can live with slightly worse food. Like, so it's not the best thing I've ever eaten, but it's so much fun and it's so much, so it's such an experience, but yeah, it was not the best pizza I've ever eaten. That is correct, but it's still recommendable because it's a fun experience in my opinion. And you're a Ravenclaw. Well done, 100 points to Ravenclaw. Good, I think I'm pretty happy. I'm still not sure if I added oil. I think I did. I usually like to go with the... I'm going quite the sour route because I personally like vinegar a lot. I even like... Um, how's it called? Uh, chi uh, chips with salt and vinegar. Either chips. Or even fries with vinegar, which is something I think you can only get in, in, uh, in the UK and New Zealand, Australia, maybe. I don't think I've ever seen it in Germany. Like you literally get a portion of fries and then a little pot of vinegar where you can dip it in. It's slightly strange if you're not used to it. Or you can even, um, if you get a, f like, like a, some fries at a, at a stall or some imbis bistro and you get it in one of those god damn it german spitztüte in one of those uh pockets bags it's like 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 an ice cream cone made out of paper newspaper or something is there a specific term for that in english there is one in german 
<laughs> and you take it and then um, they just sprinkle vinegar all over it. Yeah, I mean the, the Brazil Brasileiro Rodicio food, um, that is much more common. I've seen that, it, I've had that in Berlin and um, I've had that a couple times even around here. But the pizza version, honestly, I would eat it with every kind of food. I don't need it to be pizza. Make it Greek, make it tapas where people are just walking around. Do you want to try this? I'm just a sucker for trying little portions of everything. <laughs> That's what this whole thing boils down to. I don't need like big portions of one thing. I want to have a little bit of everything all of the time. And I think a sach sachet, isn't that something more like, more, maybe I'm completely misinformed. Isn't it like a little, wait. Moment. This is what I was, would associate with a sachet. Like a little thing with mayonnaise or ketchup or something like it. This is mayonnaise. <laughs> But maybe that's the correct word, who knows? I think the pizza is almost done, by the way. Mm -hmm. mm, give it a moment more. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm so warm. And while I'm doing that, I'm eating my corn salad. Mm. Corn is amazing. You can do so many things with it. I also have some corn flakes over there, which is still something I would like to find out if I can make it myself. I don't think so. Not necessarily. I think to get like true corn flakes that are so crunchy and everything, you need to have some specific uh, devices that I don't have in a normal kitchen. <laughs> That is not mayonnaise, that is Lil Mayo, in my opinion. Am I missing a joke? Or what, what's, what's the difference between mayonnaise and Lil Mayo? Currently trying to be very patient. Very, very patient. Not good at being patient. <laughs> I want that thing now! But it's getting better when it stays in longer. It's getting crunchier. The cheese is melting more and pr crumbling up into like tiny crunchy little bits and like... <sighs> yeah. Oh, because it, it's... Okay, yeah. I thought I'm missing some... Um, I'm missing a joke, Pelixson. But I guess the obvious just flew over my head. So while I'm waiting two more minutes, Patiently. What are you having for food today? Something especially interesting? Something fun? I mean, everything can be fun. I'm literally having like a breakdown, mental hype breakdown over how good corn salad is. No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. Oh my god, the Spongebob times. The Spongebob times. I'm not good with waiting. <laughs> okay, I'll try to remember that, Pelixson. I'll try to remember not to think too deep into your jokes. <laughs> okay, so one more minute. What can I tell you? Oh, I read, the ch I read an article about um, China. Not only China, obviously, because for me it's almost always something with games. Um, you probably, uh, some time ago, at, in 2021, China's government gave out regulations about how much children are allowed to play games. And if you're under 18, then you're allowed to play one hour of games per day but only, only on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and on public holidays. So you're literally only allowed three hours a week if there is no public holiday. And now reports, I mean, I'm not sure if I trust 
those reports because they are obviously probably going coming from China and not sure how trustworthy those, those numbers are. But supposedly around 50% are actually adhering to those regulations. And that is crazy. And then what's even hor 